What's going on everybody? It's Saul Sunforge for Dungeons and Taverns. How's everybody doing? This is video 6 out of 10 celebrating the OGL 1.0 victory. We're going to have 10 videos put out before the end of the month. So today is it. This video is the top 5 things that your DM would like you to do. These aren't going to be rated in terms of importance. Just a list. So the first one, and this probably is the most important one, is to be on time. Nobody likes to wait for just one person. If you have a group of six players or five players, four players, if you have anybody else there that's waiting for you, they're depending on you to be there on time. If you constantly aren't able to be there on time or even make the sessions, let somebody know, let the DM know about it. If you're a consistent no-call, no-show, then why do you want to be in the campaign? You're taking up a spot that somebody else maybe who wants to play and will show up is taking so don't be inconsiderate jerk and let them play if later on there's a scheduling conflict just let the dm know they'll understand and then maybe if you still want to play find a campaign elsewhere that will work with the time frame that works for you or you can let the dm know that it's only temporarily and you'll be back so let your character tag along and do whatever just make sure they don't die for me, please, because I'd like to join back in your campaign. And then let them know an estimation of around when that's going to be. Number two is bring snacks. If it's in person, campaign at an actual table and not online. I know it's rare anymore, but it still happens, and I still prefer it. And I think most DMs do prefer at tables versus over the internet. But look, your DM put a lot of work into the campaign. Sometimes an insane amount of work. No matter what, even if they didn't just got something together an hour before you all showed up, they still are given their time to make sure that you're having a good time. They want everybody around the table to have a good time. But as a player, you should also want the DM to enjoy their time with you. Or else, why else would they want to do it if they don't enjoy their time with you? So make their life a little bit easier by providing some snacks for the table. You can provide snacks just for you and the DM, but preferably it should be for everybody at the table to share. And ideally, they'll bring snacks as well. And so everybody will get a little bit of everything. My extra cautionary recommendation is don't get Cheetos or Doritos. They stain maps. They stain minis. They stain dice. It's gross. They definitely stain the book in fingerprints of Cheeto dust or Dorito dust. Do not do it. Don't bring messy things. And if you're going to eat something, ideally you should bring something for everybody else. Who wants to sit there and watch you scarf down a 12-inch sub or an extra large pizza by yourself while everybody else is sitting there hungry? You don't want to be that guy. Everybody will hate you for it. The next point is if you're going to smoke or you're going to drink, do so in moderation. Never want to make yourself look like a fool in front of strangers, especially um, I caution you against doing those things. But if you're doing those things with a group of people you trust, there's a little bit more leeway. But still, alcohol and d and I find, don't terribly mix well. Because a lot of times you'll get those rules lawyers and those people who disagree with every decision. They're contrarian, things like that. They're already that kind of player. Or maybe even if it, the situation is that kind of DM. But usually it's that kind of player because there's way more players than DMs. That's just the way that that's the nature of the game. You need way more players and you only need one DM. And there's still a shortage of DMs. What does that tell you? That tells you you probably don't want to act like a fool and get kicked out of the group because you smoked too much weed or drank too much and ended up, you know, picking a fight or something like that. It's not worth it. Just have a little bit of fun. Be cool. Be calm. And you'll be collected and good to go. The next point is to show up early and prepared. Ideally, you don't want to show up when it starts because everybody talks around the table and the DM has to sit there and wait for everybody to get their conversations in, what's been going on since the last session, all those types of things. Those types of conversations usually should be kept to a minimum during playtime and only should be discussed and expanded upon before the game, during breaks, when if there's smoke breaks or things like that, to go outside on the porch. Uh, you guys should be able to talk then. And then, of course, after the game, there's there's usually a decent amount of time before everybody has to go home or whatever, depending on what time you play, of course, and depending on the host home rules, uh, whether you know you guys have to leave like right away after you're done or you can hang around for up to an hour. 
Usually if it's a hobby shop, they don't mind too much if you loiter around, but don't loiter around too much because those places do have customers as well. And since you're no longer being serviced by playing the game, it's best to move on to avoid the congestion of a crowded hobby shop because a lot of them places are smaller. And my last and final point is, if you enjoy the campaign or you're particularly enjoying a session, let the DM know. The DM loves those things. I promise you, the DM will be very appreciative if you are enjoying yourself and you let them know that you had fun and they were highly capable of creating that fun for you and responsible too. Everyone likes praise and to be thanked and DMs are no different because there's a great chance that if your DMs DM more than one campaign, he's ran into those types of players. And as a bonus rule, if you agree to go somewhere, don't change it. Don't do things in the campaign just to be a jerk or to be contrarian. When you're playing the game, there's buy-in that you are expected to pretty much stay with your group. There might be occasions where you split the group, but if you're trying to be the lone wolf type player who sits in the dark corner of an inn brooding silently at his own table, I mean, you know, there's not really room for that, okay? You could do that a little bit, be an edgelord a little bit, because I know everybody likes to be an edgelord sometimes, apparently, I guess. That's a thing. But don't don't overdo it. Don't make yourself into your character's flaws into your own. Don't weave. Don't do that. Just just don't do it. No one will like you. And also, if you play a Kenku, you better have a wide range of voices because if you don't and you just explain everything that your Kenku is saying and do all these things, people are going to dislike you rather fast. So make sure that you uh, have a range of uh, character voices, at least four to six, I'd say, in order to accurately play the Kenku pretty well. And it's actually funny if you know any impressions of actual uh, pop culture things uh, nowadays, and throw those in there for a little bit of laughs to relieve the situation, because people will get tired of you talking like that. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Saul Sunforge. This is Dungeons and Taverns. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Tell me if you have any rules uh, that you don't like as a DM uh, about players that they should abide by or different advice for players um, when they come to a table. A lot of people are coming into the hobby now, and so we want to be you know, inclusive by giving them the keys, sort of, um, that we didn't have, you know, less gatekeepers and more gaming. That's what I think. What do you think? Leave it in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves.